scripture reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 24 to 27. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drug tax came to Peter and asked, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the temple, into the house, Peter was the first to speak. Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked. From whom do the kings of earth collect duty and taxes from their own sons or from others? From others, Peter answered. The sons are expelled, Jesus said to him. But so that we may, so that we may not offend them, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish that you catch, open its mouth, and you'll find a four drop coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. May the word add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. The story that we just heard in the Bible is uh, usually one of those stories that, that generates one of three responses. And the first response, which is probably the least likely, is uh, you sit there when you hear it, you say, Oh yes, the story of the fish and the drachma, one of my favorites in the whole Bible. That, that one's probably not too likely. The second response is a little bit more likely is, like, yeah, the, uh, the story of that, that fish swallowing the coin. <laughs> I almost forgot that one was in there. And then there's the third one, which is probably the, what most of you are saying yourselves this morning. What in the world did he just read? What, what was that? A story about a guy finding money inside a fish? Well, maybe I should go fishing. I mean, that's what you were thinking, wasn't it? This is just one of those stories that, that people don't talk about a lot. I mean, you don't hear about this story a lot. Pastors don't preach about it a whole lot. But at the same time, this is one of those stories that, that in just a couple small verses has so many valuable lessons that it can teach us. So we're going to take a look at this very short story this morning to see what you might not realize, this gem that was hidden in the Bible up to this point. So let's start off with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you once again for today. God, we, we're just in a thankful mood this morning. We thank you for this, this story, this wonderful, true story from the Bible. And we pray right now that you would be speaking to us, God. Just help us to understand what this story truly has to teach us about us and our lives and allow us to apply it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So when we come to today's scripture, we find a story that is only recorded in the book of Matthew. Three verses in the book of Matthew. This is not one of the ones that's recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then we even get some that are crossed over into John. This is just one, and, and it's recorded in Matthew and only Matthew. And, and if you ask my opinion, I, I, I would say that possibly the reason that it's in here and not in the others is because Matthew was a tax collector. And this is a story about taxes, a story about money. So it's right up his own alley. But that's just my guess. But regardless of why it's in there, we have a recording of what you would refer to as one of the lesser known miracles of Jesus. So there's some miracles that everybody knows about. You know, the, the healing of the, the, the paralytic, the casting out of the demons, the feeding of the 5,000. But then you've got the fish and the drachma. So this is one of the lesser known stories of Jesus. And the story starts off with Jesus and his disciples returning to Capernaum. So they're going into the town of Capernaum. And when they get there, some tax collectors pull Peter off to the side. And they say to Peter, hey, hey Peter, does, 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 does your boss over there, does Jesus, does he pay the temple tax? Now, unlike today, where the government uh, removes a, an extremely large portion of your check right off the top, and then you get the rest of it at home, that's not the way that it worked back then. You see, back then, when the tax collector showed up to your house, you had to pay them taxes. So you had to save up and make sure you had the, the right amount of money. And there were a couple taxes that they had to pay back in the day as well. They had to pay a tax to the Roman government and to Caesar. But then if you were a Jew, you also had to pay an additional tax. This tax was called the temple tax. Um, and this tax at the time was, was two drachma per Jew per year. So every year, for every Jew that, that, that there was, they had to pay two drachma to the temple. And where this tax went, it would pay for all of the costs of running the temple. You know, the, the upkeep of the temple just to keep everything going that needed to go going. So 
The tax collector comes to Peter and he says, hey, hey, Peter, do you know Jesus? Is he planning on paying this tax? Does he pay this tax? And Peter responds, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course he pays this tax. He pays the tax just like everybody else does. Now, Jesus, at the time when Peter is talking to this tax collector, Jesus is already inside the house, so he's not privy to this conversation. But when Peter's done talking to the tax collector, he comes inside the house, and before Peter can even get a word out of his mouth, Jesus brings up the subject. He says, hey, wait, what do you think, Simon? Uh, wait, what do you think, Pete? Um, from who do the, the kings collect their duties and taxes? Do, do they collect it from their own children? Or, or do you think they collect it from, from all of the other people? And I always thought this part of the story about Jesus was pretty cool. I mean, Jesus was a pretty cool guy, but when he does stuff like this, it, it, it just always, you know, amazes you. It must make great to be around Jesus. Peter walks in the door, and before he even says a single word, before he says anything, Jesus starts to talk about exactly what is on Peter's mind. I mean, you just you can't sneak anything past Jesus. That, that's what's so great. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is this this is a quality that Jesus possesses and that God possesses. I mean, it, it, it shouldn't have surprised Peter because the fact of the matter is, is that God, that, that Christ knows exactly what you need before you need it. And when this is, and this is something that's out of the ordinary, something we don't experience every day. But you ever wonder, why, why did God pass this down to us? Wouldn't this be a great thing if God passed this, this down to us, that we knew what people need before they ever needed it? You ever go to a, a, a restaurant and have one of those waiters or waitresses that was really on the ball? I mean, you know, no, really on the ball. They, they knew what you needed and they brought it to you before you even asked it. I mean, they brought you your ketchup for your fries before the fries even came because they just knew you were going to need ketchup. If you have my kids with you, they brought you the extra napkins with the ketchup because they knew that you were going to need those since you just got the ketchup. I mean, but one of those waiters, that, that, that was absolutely amazing. They brought you your second drink before you were finished with your first drink. I mean, those kinds of waiters, you're just like, wow, this is, this is so nice. This is really good. And every once in a while, it, once in a blue moon, you'll come across a waiter or a waitress like that who just really knows what you need before you need it. And I say once in a blue moon because most of the time, you, you've got a, a waiter or a waitress that cannot figure out from your loud slurping that you could use another drink. I mean, we've all had those. <laughs> Uh, you guys didn't need anything, did you? You good? You didn't need anything? Yeah, that's, that's what you usually have. But when you come across one of those special kind of waiters, it's really cool. And wouldn't it be cool if it was just a waiter? I mean, if this, if this just spread out in the life that, that people around you knew what you needed before you needed it. A spouse who started rubbing your shoulders before you told them that it hurt. Wouldn't that be great? Or, or kids who knew to start cleaning the house before you had a mental breakdown. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> Or a pastor who knew when to shut up before you got bored out of your mind. Wouldn't that be great to have? Yes? <laughs> one out of three is not bad, right? Yes? Yeah, we can praise God for that. I won't say which one. Um, but we're not good at reading minds. We are not good at reading minds. My sister, my sister, when we were kids, she used to think that my brother and I could read her minds. I don't know, I, I think I told you guys this before, but we would go on long family trips and the three of us would sit in the back of the van. And if we were going on a trip somewhere, we didn't have TV to watch or anything like that, so we would take Uno with us. We would play Uno. And when we were playing Uno, what we would do with Maggie's before we started playing Uno, we had her get out this pair of sunglasses. And we would tell her, Meg, you look so cool in these sunglasses. These sunglasses just really look amazing on you. And Meg would be like, oh, oh well, I look cool. That's nice. My brother's being nice to me. This is great. We should have been the first sign that something was up. Um, <laughs> but what would happen is we, we, Frank and I had a plan. Because in Uno, what do you have to do? You say Uno when you get to the last card, and if, if you've got the right color and then it goes down, then you're out. Well, the special sunglasses that Meg had had those mirror reflective fronts in the front of them. So anytime she would go to go out, Frank and I would look just right in her eyes, say, oh, she's got yellow. Change the color to red. Yes, and Meg would think that we could read her minds. Little did she know we were just terrible, terrible big brothers. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is, is you can't read minds. People do not know what we need before we need it. Uh, and, and that's a sad truth, except for God. Except for God, God does. I mean, people don't know it, but God does. God knows well in advance what is going to happen to us. And he knows what our needs are going to be when, when this thing is going to happen before it happens. 
And Jesus, he knows this too. I mean, him and God, same substance, and he knows this too. And that's why he's able to begin this conversation. Even before Peter brings it up, Jesus starts talking about it. And basically, Jesus asks, hey, hey, Peter, let's talk about something for a second, okay? If the king has a kid, does he collect taxes from his own kid? Or does he collect taxes from all of the other people? And Peter said, well, well from others, of course. He's not going to collect it from his own kid. He's going to collect it from the other people. And Jesus says that the children uh, uh, are exempt, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't need to collect taxes. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Kids, kings aren't going to collect taxes from their own children. You see, this, that, the tax that they're collecting is the temple tax. So it's basically God's tax. And Jesus is saying, so should God's kid have to pay this tax? Um, obviously not. So Jesus shouldn't have to pay these taxes, but he doesn't want to, to offend anybody. He doesn't want to, you know, hurt feelings or, or, or make them think that, that he isn't doing the same thing that everybody else is. So Jesus says, okay, Peter, so that we may not cause offense, do this, buddy. Go to your lake, throw out your line, take the first fish that you catch, open it up, and inside that fish's mouth you're going to find a four drop of coin. I want you to take that coin and give it to them for your taxes and for mine. This is amazing. I mean, this is a really awesome thing about God, knowing what you need before you, you even knew that you needed it. He can set up well in advance ways to get it to you. And these are awesome ways to get it to you that you never would have thought of to begin with. God knew that Peter and Jesus were going to need some cash in order to pay this tax so that they wouldn't offend anybody. And neither of them have a dime in their name. So what does he do? Ahead of time, God causes a fish to swallow a four drachma coin so, so then they can catch the fish and give the coin to the man to get the taxes paid. I mean, I mean, seriously, think about how awesome that is. It tells Peter, just go cast the line, catch a fish, take the coin up, head to the guy. I mean, this is not a coincidence. This is not just something that happened to be on that day. This is a well-designed and thought-out, amazing and implemented plan. You see, we've got a God who puts plans into actions to meet our needs and answer our prayers before we even ask them. Before we even ask them, and, and that's awesome. And it, it reminds me of this, this great story that I heard about a missionary. This is an absolutely true story. And this woman still goes around telling this story to, to talk about God's power. Her name was, she, was, she came from Northern Ireland, and her name was Helen Rosevere. And she was a missionary to the people in the Belgian Congo in the town of Zaire. Um, and, and, and she tells this story. She says the story started off sad. Um, because a, a mother at our mission station, she died after giving birth to a premature baby. And we tried to improvise an incubator because the, this, this premature baby just wasn't going to make it. And in, in the Congo, it's warm during the day, but it gets extremely cold during the night. And they were actually taking the child and trying to lay it as close to the fire as they could, but that was obviously dangerous. And they really needed an incubator. And they had a hot water bottle, but when they went to go and fill up the hot water bottle, the hot water bottle burst. And they knew that with the bursting of the hot water bottle, what the chances of keeping the small child alive. So they were talking to their children at the mission, and they said, let us, let us pray for God to, to save this child. We've lost our hot water bottle. And one of the girls at the mission says, I would like to pray. And she begins to pray out loud. And she says, dear God, please send a hot water bottle today. Send it today, God, because tomorrow will be too late, and by then the baby will be dead. And while you're about it, would you please send a, a, a dolly for the little girl so that she'll know that you really love her? And Helen says, we all believe in the power of prayer as Christians, but I thought, this girl just prayed for too much. I mean, you know, God does help. He does bring, bring things. But to pray in something that specific, I, I just didn't want to, to dash her hopes. But at the same time, I, I just really didn't think that this was a way that, that he was going to do anything. Wouldn't you know, later that day, a package arrived. Folks, this is a true story. Later that day, a package arrived, and the children watched eagerly. They all gathered around as they opened it, and much to their surprise, they found some clothing on the top. And you know what they found under the clothing? A hot water bottle. And the girl who was digging through saw the hot water bottle, and immediately, the, the girl started, who, who had prayed so earnestly, digs deeper, and they said, what are you looking for? She said, if God sent the hot water bottle, I know he sent a baby dog. And lo and behold, there was a baby doll in the bottom of that box. You see, the Heavenly Father knew in advance that this is what they were going to need. And five months earlier, a woman's group in England, who she had been a, a, a part of, who had never sent anything before, had sent out this package. And when they asked these people, why would you do this? The woman said, we have no idea why we'd send a hot water bottle to the Congo, but we just felt God saying this was something that we were meant to do. True story. 
five months in advance, God put a plan into action to save the life of this little child and to answer the desperate cries and prayers uh, of a wonderful little girl. God knows what you need before you need it. And God sometimes enacts plans on how to give you what you need long before the need arises. But there's also an important part of the scripture. I mean, it's short, but a part that we tend to skip over that, that we don't look at as much. And it's great that God enacts the plan on how to give you what you need. But you've got to understand the way that he wanted to do it. I mean, when you look at this story, when, when it, how did he want to get the gold coin to Peter? He could have given the Peter the gold coin any way he wanted to, right? I mean, right at that moment, a, a, a card could have shown up in the mail that said, Happy birthday, Peter. Here's a four drachma coin. Spend it how you want. I mean, he could have done that. Um, somebody who owed him money could have come walking in the door. Here's that coin I owed you from a long time ago, right? God could have done it that way. Or, or uh, Jesus just could have walked up. He could have been like, Peter, hey, uh. What's that behind your ear? Oh, oh, it's a four drop of coin. There it is. Look at that. Here, go use it. I mean, he could have done that. Absolutely, he could have done that. But what does he choose to do? He chooses to make Peter go and fish for it. Yeah, and Peter was a fisherman, so it was something that he was capable of, something that was within his power that he could do. But the way that he did it was amazing, wasn't it? Because Peter was a fisherman, which means he fished for a living, not for a hobby. Which means when he went fishing, he threw out a net. You brought in as much fish as you could, and then you kept the ones that you liked. And the other ones you, you put back. But what does he do? One line. Cast one line out in the water. For Peter to, to catch one fish that had that exact point in the mouth that they needed. It, it just showed so clearly that God was the one who arranged this. But the only way that was going to happen was if Peter stepped out in faith and de did what God asked for him. See, in our lives, God wants to provide for you spiritually, physically, emotionally. But you know what? He also wants you to be willing to step out in faith and to meet him a portion of the way. He wants you to step towards him so that he can step towards you and finish the rest of the plan. And here's the bad thing, folks. is so many times God has this great plan lined up. He's planned it out months in advance because he saw what was coming. He knew how he had to fix it. He knew how he was going to get these things right in your life. But then we just sit there and we wait for him. We say, okay, God, do it. Fix it. And he says, take a step towards me. We say, no, nah, go ahead. You got this. You got this. And we stand there and we wait for him, never taking that step towards him. Never doing our small part to help this plan go into action. It reminds me, you've heard the story about the man who, who, was, who had a house down by the Mississippi River. And the Mississippi River had two levees and the first levee broke because of the flooding that was coming through. And he climbed up on his roof and the waters came through and, and, and it clearly came up his house almost to the top of the roof. And he stood on the roof and a rescue boat came by and said, listen, first levee broke, second one's about to break. We've got to get you out of here. And the man said, I'm a Christian. I believe that God is going to save me. He's going to provide for me. He's going to, he's going to protect me. He's going to get me out of this danger. Um, go ahead. Go find somebody else because I have God taking care of me. So the boat left. But then they circled back around, came around 20 minutes later. They said, look, we've picked up other people. Well, now we're back here to get you. That levy's going to break. We've got to do it. He said, I've got God. He will take care of me. Trust me. Just go take care of somebody else. They left. They came back 10 minutes later. They said, levy is about to burst. If you're getting out of here, you've got to go now. He said, don't you understand? I'm a Christian. God will take care of me. Go take care of someone else. I am fine. So the boat left. And ten minutes later, that levee broke, came washing through, washed over the house, and, and sadly the man drowned, drowned to his death. And he goes up to heaven, and when he goes to the pearly gates, he says, i got to talk to God. I, I, I have to talk to God and, and see what happened. And, and they, they walked him over to God, and he says, what happened? I told everybody you were going to save me. I thought you were going to save me. And God replied, are you serious? I said the Three times. This is us. This is us. So many times we are the guy on the roof, and God's got the plan. He's got it in action. He sends the people. He's got everything lined up, and all we've got to do is take that one step, the one step to fix what we've got to fix, the one step in God's direction that that allows the rest of the plan to take part. But instead, we just stand there. We stand there like a loaf waiting for him to do anything without ever willing, being willing to take the first step ourselves. Peter had to walk down to the water. He had to bait the hook. He had to cast the line. He had to catch the fish and then take the coin out. That was his part of the plan. It was a great plan, but he had to do his part of the plan. 
That's what I want you guys to learn today. I want you to learn first and foremost that whatever you are going through right now, whatever you are dealing with in your life right now, it is not a surprise to God. He saw it coming a long time ago. And you know what? Because he saw it coming a long time ago, he has already put a plan into action of how to fix it, of how to make it better, of how to get your life back on track. He started this so long ago because he loves you. And it's not a surprise to him. But the last thing that you have to remember is, is he's got a plan, but it's up to you to take that step towards him to make sure that this plan actually starts to become accomplished. You cannot just sit on the roof waiting for things to happen. You can't stand in the house hoping that the fish catches itself. You have to be willing to take the step towards him to make his plan a reality. Folks, God can have the best plan for you in your life, but you're only going to reap in the benefits when you actually are willing to take that first step to make his plan become true. So remember, God knows what's going to happen. God has already planned for what's going to happen. It's up to you to take that step, folks. Take that step. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that you love us so much. We thank you that you provide for us. We thank you that you plan ahead for us. And we, we, we love you for that. And we just ask that you would allow us people that are strong enough and wise enough to take that first step towards you, God, so that your plan may reach fulfillment. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.